The Houston Health Department has reported rising levels of the COVID-19 virus in Houston's wastewater since late June. Yeah, this week, uh, the weekly increase in the viral load in the wastewater represents that more people in the city are getting infected with COVID-19. So joining us to discuss what these increasing levels mean for healthy people and unhealthy people with chronic conditions is Dr. David Purse with the city of Houston. Good morning, Dr. Purse. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me back. So let's put this into perspective. I've talked to you at times during the pandemic when we were very alarmed, scared even about the levels of COVID in our community. So put this into context for us where we stand right now. How concerned are you with the levels that you see right now? Well, you know, it's always worrisome when the numbers go up because we know that's going to translate tragically into the deaths of some people. And, and these are real deaths, right? These are people who are somebody's family members who are going to pass from COVID. That's the half empty part, uh, yeah, the half empty part of the glass. The half full part of the glass is that th with this wave, the numbers are much, much lower than what we've seen in the past. And so we're seeing the amount of virus in the wastewater going up. That is a reflection of how many people in the community are actually infected with COVID. But it's only right now we're at around 380% of the July 20th value, July 20th. 2020 value, and that's our reference point. We've been as high as 1,500. So, by mm -hmm. comparison, this is nowhere as near as bad as it uh, was in the past. But where we've also been as low as around 25%. So, we're definitely seeing an uptick now. And our biggest concern for people who have have you know minimal immunity, which means they never got vaccinated, they were never sick before, the elderly with chronic problems. And in fact, when we look at the deaths that are occurring, it's pretty much those individuals, elder folks, chronic illness never vaccinated and also never got COVID before. So the, they're still just as much risk today as they were two and a half, three years ago. And so talking specifically to those people, those people who are at high risk, what are some of the precautions that they need to be taking right now? Well, you know, clearly stay away from crowded areas. We've got a lot of folks that are in the community. There's 380 percent shows us there are a lot of people in the uh, Houston community that are infected with COVID. And remember, when you're infected, you can generally shed the virus a day or two before you even have any symptoms. So if you're going out into a crowded area, you may want to make sure that you may want to think about wearing a mask, quite honestly. And I would wear the N95 mask, not a sur simple surgical mask. I would wear an N95 mask. And then the other thing is, you know, get up to date with your COVID shots, with your vaccines. Now, we are about to get a new shot coming on the market pretty quick here. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a tough call over the next couple of weeks. Do you go and get what's available or do you wait for the new one to come out? So it's, uh, you know, I'd be paying close attention where I'm going, whether or not I want to wear a mask. Yeah, that is actually a question that I keep getting. Should I get one now if I haven't had one in a long time? Because we know the numbers are going up. Do I wait for the new one? And it, it's I, I haven't been able to answer that question. So thanks for giving us some insight on that. I mean, it's really a uh, it's really a tough call, like you said. And there's a lot of healthy people out there who really just aren't taking this illness seriously anymore. What would what would your message be to them if they were to become infected with COVID? What, what do you want them to know? Yeah, great question. So what we're finding is that people who've got some level of immunity, either from vaccine or from previous illness, when they're getting infected with COVID today, their symptoms are much milder than they were in the, you know, what we were seeing in the past when people had no immunity, right? So that's to be expected. But for the otherwise healthy person today who contracts COVID, remember, you can just spread it just as easily as you could before, right? So it's, while you may be tolerating it a whole lot better, you really need to pay attention to what you're, what you're uh, doing, what your activities are, who you're spending time with, because you're likely spreading it. It is an extremely contagious virus. So pay attention to, you know, whether or not you should go to work, whether or not you should go to the school function, whether or not you should go and visit your grandparents. These are serious questions because you are able to spread the virus, even though you're not terribly ill with it. Yeah, and there could be people in your community who could get terribly ill still. Um, so let's talk about how to protect yourself. I know you're going to say the best way to protect yourself is the vaccines. And like you just mentioned, there is one. We're kind of in a limbo area now because there is one expected to come out. I think I think the FDA is meeting this week to talk about it. So what should people know about those new vaccines? Are they going to be able to protect the current strains that are going around? What, what do we expect to learn this week? Yeah, so the, the good news is we're, we're right on the cusp of getting a new vaccine, which will be much better uh, focused on the currently circulating uh, virus. And in fact, the new one, the BA.2.86, it turns out that it looks like this vaccine that's coming out will actually protect well against that as well, even though that sort of came on the scene after the vaccines were in, in production. Now, as you pointed out, the federal government, this is the FDA and the CDC, they're going to be meeting this week and maybe even next week. 
and the final touches to get it um, to be approved to go out. So the FDA will approve it, and then the CDC will come out with the specific recommendations for healthcare professionals. And once that's done, the manufacturers will begin shipping it. And so it should become available, I'm thinking, within the next couple of weeks. So it could still technically be available within this month, but I mean, I mean that does seem pretty fast. Uh, once it is available, is it going to be like before, where insurance will cover it? Can the uninsured go someplace to get one? What, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, so clearly if you've got health insurance, they should cover uh, the vaccine, and every plan will be a little bit different. But for the uninsured or the underinsured with children, they'll be able to get it through a longstanding program called the Vaccine for Children program, which is available through your local health department. And with adults, there's a new program starting from the CDC called uh, Bridges Access Program. And again, for people who are uninsured or underinsured adults, Many of the pharmacies and fairly supported uh, health care centers are going to be offering it. And if you live in the city of Houston, you can call our health department at 832-393-4220. And we'll get you set up with a place to go and get that uh, vaccine if you like it. Excellent information as always, Dr. Purse. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. That's Dr. David Purse, Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston. Thank you.